Hello students, uh, this um, video lesson is all about the levels of classification within animals. Um, so I'm going to go over this with you right now. Um, remember when I said that there were five kingdoms in living things? There's the kingdom of animals, the kingdom of plants, the kingdom of protists, the kingdom of fungi, and the kingdom of bacteria. So um, what we're going to do is go over how we classify all of the animals in the kingdom of animals. All right, we've begun to do this. Um, but I'm just going to go through this hierarchy with you. Okay, so if we think about all of the animals in the world, um, we think of this massive group. So I've organised this like an inverted triangle. So it's big on the top and it gets all the way down to small. So at the top here in the kingdom, we have every single animal in the world. And right down the bottom, we come down to one specific type of animal. So we go from everything all the way down to a single species. So this is how we do it. All right, the kingdom of animals is actually called the kingdom of animalia. Okay, and then um, the next level of classification, when we ask that magical question of does it have bones inside its body, we'll split our um, massive group of animals into two. So we'll now have not one big group, but we will have two smaller big groups. They're still very, very big groups. And those will be our vertebrate groups and our invertebrate groups. Okay, we call that level of classification the phylum. So basically all that means for us is, is it a vertebrate animal or is it an invertebrate animal? Okay, that's the easier way for us to think about it. Everything in um, science has a fancy pet's name. It usually has a Greek um, root or a Latin root, um, but you get used to it. Everything just sounds a bit, little, little bit funny. And the reason why we do that is because it's a universal language. So every country in the world will recognise these um, terms. So I might go to a zoo in Japan and be looking for a lion. I don't speak Japanese, but I know that the scientific name for a lion is Panthera leo. I could say to the zookeeper, can you show me where the pan Panthera leos are? And he will show me where the lions are. So it's a universal language, all these scientific fancy pants names. Okay, so we've got all of the animals, then we divide them into groups based on whether they have a backbone or not, vertebrates and invertebrates. Then the next level of classification is where we break them up into their class groups. So these are the groups that we're the most familiar with in science. So for us in grade three, we've talked a lot about things like mammals and reptiles and sharks, oh not sharks, doing uh, mammals and reptiles and fish, birds and amphibians. So they are our five vertebrate groups. Um, our invertebrate groups um, are our animals without a backbone and their groups are the annelids, mollusks, crustaceans, arachnids, who am I forgetting? Oh, insects and one more, I always forget the last one, it wasn't the annelids, it was, let me check my notes, hang on. Um, yeah, oh, it was the myriapods, I always forget the myriapods. Okay, so we've got five groups of mammals, we've got six groups of invertebrates, and so we've just successfully um, made 11 smaller groups again. So every time we go down a level, we're going into smaller groups. So down here we might have things like mammals, um, reptiles, we might have annelids, or we might have a mollusk or an insect. So there's 11 groups across there, 11 different classes, okay? Those are the ones we're familiar with, and those are the ones that we are classifying this term in science. But when we go down to the next one, we're talking about um, the order. So we might have um, all of the meat-eating mammals grouped together, all of the um, plant-eating mammals grouped together, all of the mammals that eat plants and animals, uh, plants and meat together. So we're then classifying them into smaller groups again. Um, so that might be based on their eating, okay, it might be based on evolution, okay. Then we come down to the family. So we might have a family of cats or a family of dogs or a family of horses or a family of cows, family of primates, okay. So that's when we go down to the specific type of animal, okay. Okay, so if we might come down to, let's just say, um, Primates. Okay, so primates that includes all apes, monkeys, gorillas, all that sort of thing. 
And then we come down, we break those down into smaller groups, and let's just look at, say, the, the genus of monkey. So we might have a monkey. And then we can break down all of those monkeys into their individual species. So I know everyone's seen my poster up there of the proboscis monkey on the wall, the monkey with the funny big nose. So we might go down to the species of proboscis monkey. So we've gone from all the animals in the world all the way down to a single species. That's how the level of classification works. Now that was a little bit confusing. Let me just do another demonstration of that. Okay, so let's talk about um, lions. Remember I mentioned them earlier. Let's talk about how we classify um, a lion. So the lion belongs in um, the kingdom of Animalia. All the animals in the world. And that basically just means animals. Okay, it's a massive group. Uh, the next level of classification is the phylum. And the scientific word for um, this for a lion is chordata. And that basically means that he is a vertebrate. Okay, so the kingdom is animalia, the phylum is chordata. He is an animal, he has bones inside his body. The next one is the class. Um, so he is in the class of mammalia. And you probably guessed that that means he is a mammal. Okay. Um, the next one is the order, and he is in the order of carnivora. Sounds a lot like a carnivore. So that basically means he eats meat. Okay, then we get down to the family. He's in the family of cats, isn't he? So that's called the Felidae, or the Felidae. And that means all cats. Okay, we come down again into a, um, the next level of classification, which is the genus. He is a member of the Panthera group, which is great cats. So those are our big, big cats. Okay, and his specific species name is Leo. When we get down to the species name, it doesn't have a capital. I'm not quite sure why that is. It doesn't make sense to a, a teacher, but that's the way it is. So he's not Leo, sorry, it's Leo. And that it means, that's basically his name, that means lions. Okay, so he is an animal with a backbone in the mammal group. He eats meat, he is in the family of cats, he is one of the great cats, and his name is Leo. So that gives us his scientific name, Panthera Leo. So if I go to a zoo anywhere in the world, I can ask to see the Panthera Leos. And they'll show me the lion. So that's how it works. I know it's a little bit tricky, um, but you know, that's just how things are sometimes in science. So yes, taxonomy can be seem simple, but it can be a little bit tricky. But we do this so we have a universal language across the world on how we can classify animals and make more sense of them. It's how we can study them easier. If we can classify them, we can study them easier. It makes more sense. Okay, that's all. Bye.